Welcome back. In this video, we are going to solve problem 12-38 that is from chapter number 12 deflection of beam and shaft by mechanics of material R.C. Hibbler. And we will solve this problem by using singularity functions or Macaulay's method. So statement is the beam is subjected to the loads as shown. Determine the equation of elastic curve EI is constant. So you can see this is the beam AB that is having pin support at point A and a roller support at point B. At this point we have a load of 2 kips and at this point we have a load of 4 kips and at, at the end there is a movement clockwise that is 4 kips into feet. So we will find the equation of uh, elastic curve. So let's start with the solution. So if first step is that if you remove this pin support at point A so you will be having a reaction force that is vertical and this reaction force is A by N there will be a horizontal reaction force which is represented as AX and similarly if you remove this uh, roller support at point B so you will be having reaction force which will be represented as RB so we will find this reaction forces by using equation of equilibrium so first equation of equilibrium is that sum of all forces along y direction must be equal to zero and upward force is taken as positive so you can see that one force is this upward the second is this downward third is this downward and the fourth one is this upward their sum must be equal to zero so i will write a y plus uh, minus two minus four plus r b is equal to zero so from here you will get a y plus r b will be equal to 6 that this is your equation number 1 there now we will apply another equation of equilibrium that sum of all movement about point a is equal to 0 and taking the counterclockwise movement as positive so this is point A so these two forces are passing through this point A therefore they are not producing movement so the first movement about point A is this 2 into perpendicular distance is 8 and this is producing clockwise so it will be negative the second movement will be due to this force into perpendicular distance is 16 and this is also clockwise so it will be negative and the third movement that is produced due to this load RB into perpendicular distance is 24 and it is producing counterclockwise so it will be positive and the last movement is this external movement which is clockwise that is negative there but the sum of all movement about point A will be 0 so I will write minus 2 into 8 minus 4 into 8 minus rb uh, plus rb into 24 minus 4 is equal to 0 okay so this force 4 into this distance is 16 so this is 16 not 8 their sum must be equal to 0 so i will write minus 16 minus 64 plus 24 rb minus 4 is equal to 0 so from here you will get 24 rb is equal to 84 and we will get rb is equal to 84 by 24 which is 3.5 and unit will be kip now you have this rb and this is equation number 2 so put 2 in 1 put equation number 2 in equation number 1 so what we will get is that a y is equal to 6 minus 3.5 which is equal to 2.5 kip so this is a y and a x can be found by using equation of equilibrium that sum of all forces along x direction must be equal to 0 and force taken in this direction is positive so there is only a x so a x is equal to 0 so we have a x as well now we will move toward uh, 
equation of elastic curve so we know that e i into d square v over d x square is equal to movement so by using we do not have movement so by using macaulay's method macaulay's method we will find this movement m and for that movement you know that you will use the table and you can now see that these are the point loads clear so we'll start from this left hand side and at right hand side you have to neglect this two so all are these point loads so we will go to the table this you can see here this is the table for the point load p is upward so the movement equation is m minus p into x minus a where x start from this side and this is acting at a distance of a so if i copy this so it will be helpful for us so i will paste it over here okay so now you can see for this movement this is the load p and for this load first load a y so v p will be replaced with a y and a y is 2.5 so 2.5 into this is the movement equation x minus a so x minus a so you can see here a is equal to 0 so x minus 0 power 1 the second load is this and this load is downward so this equation will be minus so minus 2 into x minus now a is 8 because this is x start from here clear so x minus 8 power 1 the third load is minus 4 into x minus now the total is 16 so x minus 16 power 1 and we will neglect the terms on the right side so this is the movement equation so i will write this movement equation m will be equal to 2.5 time x minus 2 into x minus 8 minus 4 into x minus 16 okay so you can just put it in this formula so you will get e i into d square v over d x square will be equal to this 2.5 x minus 2.2 into x minus 8 minus 4 into x minus 16 so what we will do is that we will integrate it once so when you integrate it you will get e i into d v d v over d x will be equal to 2.5 x square divided by 2 minus 2 into x minus 8 power 2 divided by 2 minus 4 into x minus 16 power 2 divided by 2 plus c1 so this equation will become e i into d v over d x become equal to 1.25 x square minus x minus 8 power 2 minus 2 into x minus 16 power 2 plus c1 that this is your equation number 1 again integrate integrate equation number one so you will get e i into v which is deflection is equal to 1.25 or 1.25 whole cube divided by 2 minus x minus 8 power 3 divided by 3 minus 2 into x minus 16 power 3 divided by 3 plus c1 x plus c2 so if you simplify it further so you will get e i into v is equal to 0 0.417 x cube minus 0 0.333 into x minus 8 power 3 minus 0 0.667 into x minus 16 power cube plus c1 x plus c2 
let this is your equation number 2 now we know that c1 and c2 are c1 and c2 are unknown constant of integration and they can be found by using boundary condition so what are these boundary conditions so the first boundary condition is that at x is equal to 0 we have deflection v is equal to 0 so you can see here x is equal to 0 deflection will be equal to 0 because this is a pin support clear so put it in equation number 2 because equation number 2 is about deflection so when you put this v is equal to 0 so this term will be equal to 0 this term will be equal to 0 this term will be 0 because it will be minus 8 Macaulay bracket so anything inside Macaulay bracket which is negative will be considered as 0 this will be also 0 this will be 0 it means that c2 will be equal to 0 so I will write c2 is equal to 0 now we'll use second boundary condition and what is this second boundary condition so second boundary condition is that at x is equal to 24 feet we have deflection is equal to 0 and we will also put in equation number 2 but let me show her here here x is equal to 24 feet so we have deflection is equal to 0 because there is a support at this point okay so you will put it in this formula so i will write e i into 0 is equal to 0 0.417 into 24 power 3 minus 0 0.333 into 24 minus 8 power 3 minus 0 0.667 into 24 minus 16 power cube plus c1 into x and x is 24 so 24 c1 and c2 is equal to 0 so it will be equal to 0 and this term will be equal to 5760 the second term will give you minus 1365.33 minus the third term will give you 341.33 plus 24 c1 24 c1 so when you calculate it you will get c1 will be equal to minus 169 so now you have c1 and c2 so what will you will do is that put c1 and c2 in equation number 2 to get the equation of elastic curve so you will get e i into v is equal to 0 0.417 x cube minus 0 0.333 into x minus 8 power cube minus 0 0.667 into x minus 16 power cube plus c1 c1 is minus 169 into x and c2 is equal to 0 so again if you divide ei on both sides so you will get v is equal to 1 over ei into 0 0.417 x cube minus 0 0.333 into x minus 8 power cube minus 0 0.667 into x minus 16 power cube and minus 169 x which is the required equation of elastic curve and this is the answer so if you want to find the deflection at any point of x so put x put the value of x that x in this equation and e and i so you will get the deflection value at that x along length along the beam length or shaft length And that was all about this problem 12-38. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it. Those who are new to my channel, then I will request them to subscribe it and press the bell icon so that they may get notification about my 
every latest video which I post. If you have any question, you can ask me in comment section. Also, I have uh, pasted the all the links of playlists of every chapter. So if anyone interested, so he or she can click on the link and he will get all the problems of that chapter. Thank you for watching.